Ian Rappaport of NFL Network joins us, and Ian Rappaport's appearance is brought to you by H.L. Gross Jewelers of Garden City and online at hlgross.com and by WinBet Sportsbook, now live in New Jersey. Ian, quiet week, really, in the NFL for people like you. How's it going? Uh, it's going well. It's, <laughs> Thanks, uh, I don't know. It's been very, very strange, but here we are. So what's going on? Yeah, I mean, here we are, but this is feels like a story, and I'm talking about John Gruden, obviously, that has a beginning or maybe several beginnings, but I have no idea where the end is going to be. Let's start here. Was Did the Raiders ever get close to dismissing Gruden, firing him, forcing him to resign after the first email came out about the depiction of Demore Smith? No, uh, and so that's what's kind of interesting slash weird about this thing. So the emails go from the NFL to the Raiders on Friday. And it wasn't just the email that was originally published by the Wall Street Journal with depictions, racist description of Demora Smith. Right. It was all of the emails that we ended up reading about in the New York Times on Monday. So they get them on Friday. They do nothing. The NFL kind of waits for them to act. They don't do anything. He coaches the game. They lose. Some players address it. And then Monday, the league is still frustrated that the Raiders haven't responded. Then another story comes out on Monday afternoon. And by the time the story came out Monday afternoon, the Raiders were ready in discussions with Gruden, with him talking about resigning because they knew what was in those emails. They knew what was going to come out. That's kind of the. Wait, let me get this straight. Let me get this straight because I want to make sure this is clear. The Raiders knew about not just the racist depiction of Demora Smith, which would have been yes. enough to warrant a firing on its own, but knew about all the other offensive things that Gruden had said on Friday and thought they were going to somehow yes. get out of this? Wow. Yeah, I mean, they, they knew about all of them on Friday. I don't know oh. what ends the Raiders saw, and I don't know how they saw this wrapping itself up. I mean, you know, what would have happened had the Raiders suspended him what would have happened if the Raiders had fined him and made him go to sensitivity training? Like, I don't know, but it doesn't matter because we never got to that point. Like the Raiders didn't do anything. And then the stories kept on coming. Uh, wow. Ian, what is, I, I guess with these, I mean, what's the next domino to fall besides the, the Schefter story, which came out with the email with Bruce Allen. Do you hear that there's going to be from people you talk to or how yeah, how many more of these type of emails, these type of stories you think come out from this investigation into the Washington football team? I would be surprised if any other emails came out. I mean, it is, I, and frankly, I don't know how these came out. I mean, there were some references to them in a court filing as the LA Times uncovered, but they were redacted. So somebody had to see them redacted, I guess, and then go find the original ones. Uh, I don't know who did that. I don't know who the sources are. For me, uh, it's hard to imagine that any more coming out of this because, you know, of the 650,000 emails, we ended up getting like seven. That seems very, very, very specific. So unless those came out for a reason, which I assume they did, then I don't know how we're going to get the rest of them. I would like to see it. You'd like some transparency, but I don't know that that's going to be the case. Is there going to be a, you know, is the Players Association going to get the full report, what they want into the Washington football team, a written report? I I doubt it. Um, I know they've asked for it, and a lot of people have asked for it. The, um, the people that have sued the Washington football team and are involved in, were involved in litigation there have also called on the NFL to release all the emails. They have targeted sponsors from the Washington football team. They have done all these things. And I don't, I don't sense, I don't sense any movement toward the NFL or anyone releasing any more of the Washington football team report that was already released, which was, you know, obviously not much. I mean, when it was Ray Rice, when it was deflate gate, we got hundreds of pages of analysis and investigation research Obviously, none of that with this Washington football team investigation. Oh, my gosh. Remember what happened with Miami Dolphins and the locker room? There was like 175 pages yeah. about that. You know, Richie Incognito. That was a crazy story. We got. I read all of them. Yeah. Very strange. Crazy. So is this like uh, the NFL? Like, is there like a fear of Dan Snyder here? Because, you know, like why? 
650,000 emails, I think people would say, how could you not get more leaks, especially with the amount of parties that could have an axe to grind against a variety of people? We saw someone had an axe to grind with John Gruden. Someone has an axe to grind with Bruce Allen. Someone could have an axe to grind clearly with Daniel Snyder. There's so many aggrieved parties. Like, is the NFL just that fearful of Daniel Snyder that they don't want to, that they're insulating him in this way? I don't know the motivation for not, releasing the emails um it was you know interesting and i think a lot of people have called on the nfl to release them all but i don't aside from what was announced and from what i've learned about the initial washington football team investigation and obviously snyder has um sort of stepped away and his his wife has assumed day-to-day duties of ownership and all that stuff for the time being um i don't know of any other infractions from dan snyder you know, I assume if there, you hope if there were some, we would know. Um, it's not a big email person. Maybe that's why. No, I'm just um, saying like, but the culture of, you know, that he's presiding over where you had all these people who put their name on, on the record, off the record, went to the Washington Post. People were fired over this. Like they've acknowledged there was a major problem right. there. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. the fact that there isn't a smoking gun, like somewhere doesn't make sense. defies logic to me. I know there was something that happened on a plane that got settled and now there's NDAs that happened with Daniel Snyder, but like there has to, it just seems crazy. There wouldn't be a smoking gun somewhere that someone's yeah. seen. And you know, big investigation, 650,000 emails. And I mean, again, you would think if there was a smoking gun, we would have seen it. Um, I yeah. believe me, a lot of people are asking the same questions and I wish I knew the answer. Ian, let me, uh, you know, the Raiders have in possession all the emails Friday. Mm-hmm. If they take a stance as an organization and Mark Davis where they suspend John Gruden that day after that initial email, the initial report, the D. Maury Smith uh, email comes out, um, does that New York Times piece then still come out after the Raiders did not move and Mark Davis did not move Monday night? You know, I don't know. Great question. And these are things I'm wondering is like, what was the motivation? Look, every time, I mean, in my world too, like every time someone gives me something or, you know, information gets passed from one person to another, there's always the motivation. Sometimes it's as simple as like, you ask for it and here it is. Sometimes it's, well, my player's performing bad, but he's actually injured. Sometimes it's, hey, this contract is great. You should report it. Like, there's always motivation, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Anytime, because, you know, these things don't exist in a vacuum. So clearly somebody was motivated to make sure that the public saw these emails from John Gruden. On one hand, it could be like, well, you know, somebody was out to get him. On the other hand, these are horrible things. And this person should not be a leader in an organization, any organization, let alone a football team that has an openly gay player, majority African-American players, the very players that John Gruden openly denigrated aggressively, even in private emails 10 years ago, it sort of doesn't matter to me. Like, clearly this is what he thinks. So, And and then he went out and lied about it, saying that, you know, I don't have a racist bone in my body or whatever he said, tried to explain it away, knowing that the team was in possession of all these emails where he basically took down everybody. Of course. Crazy. Um, Man, what a foobard situation. in, In the NFL offices Sunday, were they stunned that Gruden was coaching that game against the Bears? I wouldn't say stunned, you know, definitely frustrated that no action was taken. I think, you know, the Raiders have always stood for a lot that is right in the world, right? They've had a the highest ranking female executive, uh, I believe still, uh, she's not still with the team and Amy Trask, but I I believe still has been the highest ranking female executive. They've had a Hispanic coach. They've had black coaches. They promoted diversity at every turn. I mean, this was incredibly important to Al Davis. And so not just the league office, but everyone sort of expected the Raiders to step in and go, hold on, like, this is not what we stand for. This is not right. Um, I've been, I don't know. I I was surprised that the Raiders didn't do anything. A lot of people were surprised. Had they stepped in and said, all right, you know, Gruden, you're going to step aside for a month to go get counseling or whatever. My guess is he'd still be the coach, but I wish we knew because that would have meant the Raiders would have acted. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. I, and and that gets to to Mark Davis here. Um, you know, it's it's not going to cut it where he said, you know, basically ask the NFL; they have all the answers. Kind of implied uh, that they're the leak, right? So, what about Mark Davis here and addressing it? Um, you mentioned the the frustration from the NFL offices here. Do you think we we saw Mayock yesterday? Do you think we get Mark Davis here uh, addressing I the situation? So. I hope so. I mean, it's important. I mean, so much of what this thing, this ecosphere that we're in is built on is accountability, right? Like players go play and if they play well, they do interviews after the game. If they play badly, they do interviews after the game. I mean, you know, in New York, in the New York world, you know, you guys lived for more than a decade with Eli Manning answering questions the Monday after a loss, Mm -hmm. just so he's accountable. This is part of it. This is part of our responsibility. If I screw something up, or if I report something that's wrong, I come out and say, like, here's what really happened or here's why I was wrong or here's a clarification, whatever. It's just literally part of it. And it's frustrating. We haven't heard from Mark Davis. I hope we will. I have a lot of questions. Everyone has a lot of questions, but I don't know when he will talk. There's nothing to compel owners to talk. Yeah. And I stopped expecting stuff from owners a long time ago. In but. So this is interesting, right? So we had Tiki Barber on yesterday, and he kind of made a connection here, and he's not the only one who's made it, which is, you know, you have the Washington football team in crisis. You have Jeff Bezos, who owns the Washington Post. The Washington Post was, the you know, reporting on what was going on in the Washington football team. Now, we know if you lived in D.C., and I lived there for four years, the Washington Post is the, the paper of record, and the Washington football team beat is second most just to the White House. I mean, it is that important there and to that paper. And so... Do you see a connection there, you know, that this is some kind of power play by Bezos to sort of shake up the Washington football team to make it ripe for the picking, maybe to to buy that team? I I don't see the, <clears throat> I don't see the connection there. One, because I believe editorially they're separate from Jeff Bezos. Like, I don't believe that the Washington Post acts on his feelings just because I, I mean, i I happen to be a subscriber. I get their emails every day. Yeah, same. Uh, I read I read all the stories. Like they have gone after Jeff Bezos' companies, plenty of them. Um, also, you know, there might be some other places for him to look that would be maybe more desirable. I mean, if Denver becomes available, would he be interested? If Seattle, if Paul Allen's sister ends up selling, would he be interested? I mean, these are the, you know, real questions. And the other thing is, I don't get any sense at all that Dan Snyder will sell. I really don't. I mean, maybe, I don't know. Um, They're building a stadium. He's heavily involved in that. Um, I don't get any sense he would sell ever. And I say that knowing that had he actually thought that he might sell, he probably would have done it already. Probably would have done it last year would have been my guess. And last one for me would be, you know, Gruden's going to be out of the ring of honor down in Tampa. The EA Sports is is taking and and taking him out of their, you know, the Madden game and everything by, you know, 2022. Do you think we, in the not so distant future, do you think we hear from John Gruden besides the statement that he issued after he resigned? I mean, my guess is somebody will interview him. He'll sit down. I mean, he's never he's never shot away from the camera even when things are going badly, he's always kind of done interviews. So I'm sure somebody will get him. And when they do, I hope it's better than what we saw last time, (laughs) which was, yeah, I learned things. I really don't want to address them. I don't have a racist bone in my body. Like none of that helped. And, you know, maybe now that he's had the ultimate accountability, which is losing his job, he will learn that it's not okay to say those things or also not okay to think those things and just live in that world where you just, think people are different and hate every all the differences. Um, I don't understand it. And, you know, maybe when he does talk, we'll learn that he's learned from the situation, but I don't know when that's going to be, unfortunately. You know, Ian, last one for me, and it's kind of like an inside journalism job because obviously, you know, Adam Schefter kind of gets astray here with some of those emails that came out. Uh, that he had sent to to Bruce Allen. And you yourself are an NFL insider. And, you know, you guys operate on relationships, and that's very important to how you're getting your information and breaking news. You know, when you see that story uh, and and all the stories around Schefter and you see those emails, as someone who's kind of in a similar trade as Adam Schefter, what do you think about that? Well, what I always try to do is whenever I'm reporting a story, uh, and I know we've talked about this some, but... um, if I'm going to report something, let's say on a Sunday, and it's going to be 
not good for a team or it's going to be sensitive or something, I will always reach out to the relationships I have, which are, you know, the GM, the head coach, the subject of the story, the agent for the subject of the story, team PR, so they can disseminate it and let their people know it's coming. Um, I always will let someone know what I'm going to report because mm -hmm. it's much better to be accurate and it's much better uh, to be, to, to if people have relationships, people you have a relationship with, you know, you're going to report good things. You're going to report bad things. Most right. people understand you have a job to do being upfront and just being like, Hey, here's what's coming. Um, I think that's, I think that's important. Um, so it's, you know, our job is, our job is different. Uh, it is strange on some levels. We have to report positive and negative things on people we talk to every single day, like a lot of people on a beat. Um, so the only thing I would say is just, you know, having that phone call and letting people know what's coming and checking the accuracy, um, I think is, you know, pretty important to what we do. It's what I try to do when I'm reporting an important story. Ian, great job. We appreciate it. Thanks for uh, spending time with us each and every week, and uh, we'll talk to you next Thursday, all right? Awesome. Look forward to it, guys. Take care. Thanks, Ian.